Good morning again. I'm Katie Parks. I'm the director of the Center for Towns at the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy, and we are a regional nonprofit that's working to preserve and sustain the vibrant communities of Maryland's Eastern Shore and the lands and waters that connect that. And to that, we have preserved 57,000 acres in oh, it's moving fast in uh, Maryland <laughs> in the six-minute Upper Shore County. We'll have to pick it up. Um, and to that mention, I focus my efforts on building strong towns that are uh, well-defined and creating opportunities to attract investment into our communities. So by the turn of the century, nearly a million bushels of oysters were shucked annually in Cambridge, second in volume nationwide, only to Baltimore. The working waterfront boasted 12 oyster packing houses and more than 20 crab picking houses that together employ thousands. There was a t-shirt factory, five large fruit and vegetable canneries, two steam mills for processing, and a fertilizer plant. And the Phillips companies formed the largest fruit and vegetable packing firm in the United States. Their campus spanned 60 acres, and they employed upwards of 10,000 people. To give you perspective, the modern-day population is a little over 12,000. In addition to providing jobs and tax revenue, they were supporting local growers and businesses. For example, in 1937, they purchased over a million dollars worth of produce from local growers on the Delmarva. The Phillips Company packed food for the military during World War I and World War II and were the largest supplier in the nation for the latter. They committed 90% of their production effort to the war, which unfortunately left them vulnerable in regarding market share at the end. The closing of Phillips Company in the 1960s led to wide-scale unemployment and added to growing social unrest. For decades, Cambridge was Maryland's second largest port, shipping lumber and tuna worldwide, but the canneries are closed and a, a failed port now sits at the mouth of Cambridge Creek. Today, one remaining factory from the Phillips Empire remains. Factory F, a 60,000 square foot structure, built in the 1920s, sits vacant and deteriorating. Many of our communities have underutilized vacant buildings that aren't productive to the economy or the community. So how do we breathe life back into these spaces? So ESLC is working with Cross Street Partners to um, assess the viability of launching a reuse of the 60,000 square foot factory into a food and farming exchange, which is generally a broadly defined array of food uses that address and or acknowledge and address local hunger and nutrition needs while also supporting local food and farming industry. We're considering a food processing facility, a community kitchen incubator, nonprofit office space, um, classroom space, restaurant, group pub. The Phillips Company slogan was what makes, what Cambridge makes, makes Cambridge. And marinate on that for a moment, because that's true of all of our communities. Our businesses, our development patterns, our land use, they all impact the long-term character of our communities. And Factory F is just one piece of the puzzle. Adjacent is the future home of Cannery Park, which was also once a part of the Phillips 68-year campus. And the factory housing constructed by Phillips, which is referred to as the um, Pine Street Historic Neighborhood, are a part of a greater area we're referring to as the Packing District. Our focus, comprehensive revitalization in rebuilding the economy and the community in an area plagued by decades of disinvestment high levels of unemployment and poverty. So this place matters, and that's the message we share about all of our towns. Our, our people matter, our places matter, and our towns matter. Thank you.